How do prosthetics actually work? I've had an endless amount of prosthetics over the past six years and each of them doing their own different thing, their own functionalities, and all a different price point. And yes, before you ask, it did cost me a leg. But before we begin, there are different prosthetics that we have to know about before we even get started. So there is the mechanical knee and there is a microprocessor knee. Now the difference between these two, there is a mechanical knee, which has no technology at all. It's all gonna rely on the mechanics of the actual prosthetic. For example, the running blade. So the mechanical knee, you're gonna see the mechanics of the actual knee joint because every single time that drops, it's not gonna be controlled on the way down. Gravity is just gonna do its work and take it out. Now, the microprocessor knee is battery powered, has a computer chip in the actual knee itself. It detects how fast you move, how much weight you put in it, and it moves your prosthetic for you. Now, every single time that I raise my foot, my prosthetic knows that I'm raising my leg, and it's gonna slowly move it down every single time because it knows that I'm raising it. Now, if you did that with a mechanical knee, as you saw earlier, it kind of just falls. So those are the main two differences with prosthetics. The other main difference with these types of prosthetics are the types of amputees. There is an above knee amputee and there is a below knee amputee. A below the knee amputee is cut below the knee. They're not gonna need these fancy prosthetics that require the microprocessor chips because they have their knee. Their knee is still in function. That can still raise up and down. But if you are an above knee amputee, like myself, I'm cut it right about here, you're gonna need a specific type of prosthetic that is going to fit your knee. Something we also have to address is the cost of prosthetics. Every single prosthetic is gonna cost a different price depending on the technology the country, the amount of healthcare you have. There's so many different factors that go into that. That's for a whole nother video, but I'm gonna be naming off the prices of these prosthetics based on the bill that I was received and that was still at least partially covered on our end as well. So with that, let's jump right in. This prosthetic that we have to talk about is the classic peg leg. You can't go wrong with this one. It's an all time classic. It cost me about $10 to make myself. I actually made it from a corner piece of a table. You're gonna see the screws that are barely even attached anymore because they actually popped out when I put my weight on it for the first time. So these are not reliable at all. You have to try peg leg every once in a while. And whenever you sit, it's just gonna be poking out. You can't really, you can't really bend it. It's just gonna be like this the whole time, which I don't know how pirates did it back then, but it probably wasn't that great. But the first leg that I ever received was when I was 15 years old. I just lost my leg to cancer and it was a mechanical knee. This mechanical knee is almost like the training wheels of prosthetics because it's not really that great for walking or in that matter, learning how to walk again. Every single time that you took a step, you had to make sure you landed on the heel of your foot. If not, the prosthetic wouldn't lock and you would just buckle and hit the ground. And trust me, I hit the ground a lot when I was learning how to walk again and it wasn't that good. So I personally don't recommend the mechanical knee or didn't really have a good time with it. Maybe it just suck at walking, I don't know. And it wasn't that great for me learning how to walk again during the hospital, while I was doing chemo, and while I had cancer on top of that as well. So it wasn't really that good. And with the mechanical knee, that one cost around $15,000. Trust me, when I tell you this, you're gonna hear these prices over and over again. These are the prices without insurance. These are all just the baseline price that I'm assuming is kind of universal around the whole world, but that was the cost that I received. You don't wanna lose one. The first microprocessor knee that I got, this one's called the plie. This leg has about a one to two day battery life. And the one thing about it, as well is that the battery that this microprocessor has is a camera battery. There was plenty of times where I was on a trip and I forgot to bring my leg charger, the one thing that you never want to forget on a trip, and I would forget it. But the special thing about this prosthetic is that you can literally just go to a camera store or any store available, buy a camera charger, and just charge the battery of your leg from a camera. And it would, it would always have to be a really awkward story every single time I went to a camera store because they're asking me what kind of camera I want and I'm asking for a leg battery. But this prosthetic was great. It was, you could run on it, you could swim in it, it was waterproof, did everything that I needed at the time. But the one thing about it that I didn't like was the hydraulic. That this specific hydraulic that this one has is an air hydraulic, correct me if I'm wrong, every week for me because my prosthetic was busted and it was never fixed properly, but you have to pump it up in this little circle there with a pump and every single time that you pump more air into your prosthetic, it'll swing out faster for you, which was great at the time. But for me, my air pump storage would break. So the air wouldn't stay in it and it would go out so slow and I had to swing my whole body into it. I'd be sweating every single step that I took. So I didn't like it. This prosthetic has done everything that I need today, but I don't need it anymore. So this one wasn't right for me at the time, but it is still now. With this prosthetic, it cost around, I think $35,000. Great prosthetic. I do have to put it down and mount it on the wall because I don't use it anymore. And the one thing that I do love about this as well was the running factor of it. You could attach a running blade to it if you needed to, or if you just want to run without your running blade, you could do that as well. Now the third leg that I got was the running blade. This one has a mechanical knee, as mentioned earlier. And the thing with this is that your prosthetic has to be a certain height because of the spring that's on this, because every single time that you bounce, you're gonna be leaning towards that edge just a little bit more. So your prosthetic either has to be taller on one side or shorter on one side for your running blade. Now with the running blade, these are not covered by health insurance whatsoever at all. So this costs $35,000 straight out of pocket. No health insurance company is gonna help you get this, which I think is ridiculous because it's just the reality that amputees like myself have to deal with every single day is the price of these ridiculous prosthetics. They're great 
great, don't get me wrong, like a walk and run, but they cost a ridiculous amount of money. The one thing that I love about this running blade though is that it was granted to me by a nonprofit called the Challenge Athlete Foundation. Now this nonprofit helps provide people with disabilities or physical challenges with the equipment they need in order to live an active lifestyle. If you ever need anything at all, if you are a challenge athlete or anything, please check out the Challenge Athlete Foundation. They've helped me so much over the past six years. And who knows, if you do get involved with the nonprofit, I might meet you one day. I'm actually there with them most of the time every year. I still use it to this day. It's about six years old and it's still doing everything that I need. This one is the Sea Leg. This one is from Autobach. It has around maybe a two to three battery life. Now, the reason why I switched to the Sea Leg instead of the Plie was because of the issues that I was running into with the Plie already. And I already had a running blade. So I didn't need a prosthetic. So at this time, I didn't need a prosthetic that could run and walk and do everything else. I needed something that was just gonna be useful for my everyday walking life and prosthetic that would actually work because my Plie was not working. So I went to the Sea Leg. This one is great. It's waterproof. It's great for walking around every single day. The only issue with this one is that you can't run as well compared to my running blade. When I was running on this one, it wasn't as springy, obviously, because with the running blade, you're going to be having that spring every single time that you run. But with this one, it wasn't good for that. And for me, as I was getting older, I think I was around maybe 17 or 18 when I had the sea leg, I was active. I was going to the gym. I was hiking. I was running. I was swimming. I was doing everything that you could imagine be active as an amputee. So I needed something that was going to kind of challenge me in that sort of way. So the sea leg was the good option at the time. But as I got older, I wanted to go hiking and camping and fishing and doing all these different things that I could do. So I had to upgrade. So I got the Genium X3, which is this one that I'm wearing right now. Before I even continue the sea leg, that one cost around maybe $90,000. So that's also without insurance as well. This is the best prosthetic that I've ever had, the one that I'm wearing now. This one has a five day battery life. You could run on it. You could bike on it. You could swim in it. You could see that. I'm hoping you can. But there's an app for my prosthetic. If I ever want to change modes to biking mode, I can easily change to that with the moment of my app. You're going to hear my leg beep every single time that I do it. So it's just overall the functionality of the Genium X3 of this prosthetic that I have now is the best one that I've ever had. And it literally just does everything. But the cost of the Genium X3 was a whopping $120,000. So it's definitely the most expensive one of the batch. The features of the actual leg itself is if I have my prosthetic on, actual functionality of this little button that I have here is to flip my leg. It's gonna beep if it's upside down. And it's actually not beeping right now, which is surprising. There it is. If I could flip it upside down, I could put shoes on easier. If I'm in a tight spot and I can't bend my leg, I could flip it over and kind of go through a car door because it's gonna be so much easier. Or if I just need to move my leg to a certain angle, I can do that as well. You don't realize how small of a detail that is, but of how valuable that is as well. Whenever you're sitting, walking or anything of how like, this little button to move your prosthetic a certain way would have so much value to that. But those were all six of my prosthetics, all costing around a total of 300 grand. Let me know that in the comments, which one you think is the best or which one you would choose personally if you have a prosthetic as well. Also, please feel free to like, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.